Oh, David, look at the time. Uh, I believe it's the Chainsaw Minute. I'm David, and this is your dose of Chainsaw Man. You can join us every Friday when there's a new chapter to see what Masterpiece Fujimoto put out. I'm Jordan, and if you're looking for regular Shonen Flop goodness, you can find our next episode for our first thoughts on Nico Wapa! Meow! Exclamation point on Monday. That's right, Nico means cat. If you're not familiar at all with Japanese, (laughs) now you know some Japanese. Go ahead, uh, hang out in Japan, you're good. (laughs) Just a note, these recordings are open to everyone, so listen and chat along with us on the Shonen Flop Discord every Tuesday at 3.30 p.m. Eastern Time when there's a chapter. You can find a link to it in the show notes or on our site, and sorry for the changes in the scheduling, just life is getting kind of crazy. We really are trying our best to keep everyone in the loop when we are recording. David, life gives you lemons sometimes, and you just gotta make- A lemon party. Chainsaw man. Oh, the lemon party devil? That lemon party uh, photo is kind of quaint these days, like- I bet everyone in that photo is dead. Oh, yeah, but it's like when you- in the- in the, uh, 2000s, we'd see that photo and be like, ugh, ugh, old gay guys, bleh. and now it's just like, oh man, those guys are having a good time. Good for them. Good for them, man. <laughs> oh, but Jordan, <laughs> unrelated to old gay guys, what was your devil this week? Oh, my devil this week, David, the cat conjunctivitis devil. I was hanging out with my girlfriend, Steph. She has this really sweet little black cat named Nyx. And I was making a joke about like closing one of my eyes a little bit and being like, hey, I'm Nyx because Nyx does this. And she was just like, Haha, what? And then she realized, oh, my God. Oh, my God. Yeah, her eye is like closed a little bit. So she took her to the uh, vet. And I think she's got like a little bit of kitty conjunctivitis which is kitty pink eye so she got eye drops which you know cat's not super happy about but she gonna be okay oh poor baby yeah how about you david taxes devil i had to get a bunch of financial forms and man that was so much fun i love it i love doing taxes it's my favorite oh such a blast (laughs) best part of the year right Uh i've definitely made enough money to do taxes what (laughs) (laughs) You'll make it, buddy. I believe in you. Eventually. (laughs) But enough of that, Jordan. The plot summary for... Chapter 122, The Prophecies. And thank you so much, Trey, for that awesome audio read. Yeah. Fami is speaking with Yoshida at the restaurant which he seems to live at so that he can get information. He reveals a prophecy from Nostradamus himself. That's right, everybody. The legendary Nostradamus himself that in July 1999, a great king of terror will descend and wipe out all of humanity. They tested it by having 30 inmates ask the future devil when they're going to die. And 23 of them are going to die in July. And Fami seems to correctly guess that the other seven are actually going to die this week, confirming that the current chapter does not take place in July, I don't think. No, it's also 1998, not 1999. Okay, so we got like at least another year. Yeah. She then reveals that 40 seconds earlier, a devil with the name of a primal fear appeared by an apartment complex. Wait a minute, David. Azza was near an apartment complex? What? Popcorn no David. Way. I know! Fujimoto does it again. Oh. A guy is hanging out with his girlfriend, talking about how he might get a promotion soon and wondering if he should get a car. His girlfriend says, no, it's too expensive. The guy agrees, and so they both decide to kill themselves by jumping out of the window. Their bodies, along with the others... Total mood. (laughs) Their bodies, along with others from the apartment complex, slam into the pavement right in front of Yoru, who creates a sword out of her ruler as the bodies slowly fuse together, revealing a beast made of arms and boobs. Realizing she cannot stand up to yet another unrealistic standard for women's body, Yoru turns and runs. It's exactly like uh, in in like Elden Ring when you attack an enemy and then its health bar is a lot larger than you fought and you have to run away. <laughs> I've never played Elden Ring, but like I have experienced that in games, so I know what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> so Jordan, though, why was this chapter 10 out of 10 this week? Car. <sighs> That feel when no car devil. That feel when no car devil. I really love the moment when the guy's like, shit, car payments are just so much fucking money. We'll just kill ourselves. <laughs> just easier than living. Fuck this. Gotta just die. And his girlfriend's like, huh? Yeah, sure. Why not? <laughs> it, was, it was pretty good. I got nothing better to do. Yeah, whatever. Fuck it. Why not? <laughs> Seriously, this is like the third or fourth time that Yoshida has asked someone to meet him somewhere and it's the same restaurant every time. I love how Fami just ate a shitload of food. 
Bambi was just like, oh, you're fucking paying? All right, then get me, like, cakes and cookies and, like, everything they fucking got here. You're paying. I mean, hey, I guess she's hungry because, I mean, uh, she, she's not used to having food because she's the, the famine devil. I wonder if he expense it. I would be surprised if he was paying for all that out of his own pocket. <laughs> That's true. Also, just as a note, if anyone was curious, the Nostradamus prediction is the year 1000, 1999, seven month from the sky shall come a great king of terror shall be revived the great king of Angelumus before and after Mars shall reign as chance will have it. And listener, you're just going to we're all just going to have, tr- have to trust that David pronounced that all correctly. <laughs> Thanks. I'm guessing that was a real prediction. At least if the, the Redditor uh, Behanort, where they listed it, at least as far as I know, it seems legit. I believe it. I mean, you know, uh, there's a lot of Nostradamus prophecies that, you know, David, I don't think they really came true in the literal sense. No, so, I think his accuracy rate was pretty terrible. Yeah. I think if you're the kind of person who really loves stretching things out really, really far, you might be able to argue that he predicted some things. Yep. Maybe if you're working for the Discovery Channel, you can do that. Exactly. Or maybe that maybe it was the History Channel that does that. One of them just used to always run these bullshit documentaries about how Nostradamus was right, and it was really stupid. I also think it's fucking hilarious how Yoshida is like, Fami? Really? You named yourself Fami? She's like, I'm the famine devil. I can do whatever the fuck I want. She's like, I'm the famine de- I don't give a fuck if anybody knows who I am, dude. I don't care. All right? I'm just here to eat a lot and tilt my head to the side, all right? And I'm all out of head tilts. Oh, I'm never out of head tilts. I'm the fucking famine devil. <laughs> if uh, Yoshida has that Sigma male energy, Fami has that, like, big dick energy. Yeah, she got some BDE, you know? Mm-hmm. She ain't scared. So, David, what do you think the Great King of Terror is? Which primordial fear? So I had arguments. I've seen people say the Death Devil, and I just think that's too big a player. And also that is should be Fami's relative. So it seems like it's kind of, you know, so it's a primordial fear, which makes it hard because it has to be something that like an animal would also experience if it's primordial. So I kind of thought maybe it's the Suicide Devil because that's like an underling of the Death Devil. But I don't know if that's really a primordial fear. I almost feel like uh, suicide would be like too obvious. Yeah, maybe it's just the Depression Devil. I was thinking that it might be the Life Devil. Because people... (laughs) They just summon the board game. (laughs) No, but like seriously, because um, the thing about people who are suicidal or commit suicide is that it's not that they want to die. It's that they're terrified of like what life has in store for them. You know, like they're terrified of the idea of living anymore and stuff, you know? Yeah. And that kind of is reflected in when those two, when those two people are talking and they're like, ugh. Cars are so expensive. I just don't want to fucking deal with it. Fuck. You want to just die? Fucking mood, man. Oh, absolutely. It's the millennial devil is what it is. Also, it might be like fear of growing up, maybe. Fear of car payments. The primordial fear of car payments. (laughs) There are many that it could be. And, uh, you know, I'm interested to see what uh, Fujimoto's got in store. I I will say, do you think that this is one of the four horsemen or is it not? I really think Fami would have made it a bigger deal if it was a horseman. That makes sense. It's really hard to think of what's a more powerful devil than the Deaf Devil. And I think that's the whole thing is all of this is a hairbringer to the Deaf Devil showing up on that July 1999 date. Okay, so if you think that the Death Devil will ultimately show up. But I don't think it's a Deaf Devil right now. Yeah, I do like your argument that it might be like a boredom devil or a, some kind of stasis devil of just something to represent just kind of feeling trapped in your mundane existence or something. Yeah. The disappointment devil. Actually, the disappointment devil might be a, a strong contender. Yeah. Oh, God, I can't wait, though, to see what happens. Did you notice that Yoshida called Fami Senpai? I did not. What do you think that is? I mean, there's kind of an implication that they are working together in some way just by how Yoshida, I mean, they're, he's literally just talking to her. And, you know, uh, sp- sorry, listener, I gotta admit, uh, there was a leech chapter last week and it had a slightly different translation, I think. And it's sort of implied when he says, I'm going to start treating you like a devil. I think in the other one, he's like, I'm going to tell public safety or whatever, and they're going to start coming after you or something like it was a little bit different. Family's like, call the cops. I don't give a fuck. Call the cops. I'll eat them. Oh, my. Yeah. Anything else? This is a chapter that's definitely a build-up chapter, and I think next week is when it's going to be crazy. But there's also a lot here. Like, also, man, uh, Asa has, like, so many school supply weapons. Yeah. Well, that's all she has access to right now. 
That's true. She does care a little bit about her school supplies, I guess. <laughs> Which, actually, yeah, that's probably what it is because she's broke. So they're probably a little more valuable to her than other people. That's, that's cute. Exactly. Well, anyway, David, thank you so much for editing the show and working on the podcast. And Jordan, thank you for being a wonderful co-host and everything else you do. Oh, thank you, David. Thank you so much. I also want to say you can find us on Twitter at Shonen Flopcast and our website ShonenFlop.com. We're also on Spotify, iTunes, YouTube, or wherever else you get your podcast. And props to Shannon for the awesome cover art. Find her online at Illuminati. And as a reminder, we are recording every Tuesday that there's a new chapter at 3.30 p.m. Eastern Time. You can find a link to it in the show notes or on our site. And thank you, everyone, who was listening in today. Absolutely. And stay tuned for Monday as we give our first thoughts on Nika Wapa. Nick a Wapa. That's a yeah. big whopper. Anyway, David, oh, I got some really bad news. I'm looking at the watch. Oh, no. Tate's on minutes past. Get the fuck out, everybody. <laughs> Can't, don't have to go home. Can't stay here. Bye. Bye.